Margaret Lewin and welcome to Margaret Lewin Quilting. Today I'm going to show you how I went about cross hatching this bag. Now this is my stash and dash bag. I'll put a link up here or up there someplace. I'll stick a link so that you can see how I made this bag, okay? But today I'm going to show you how I went about cross hatching this piece. Now that's the front, now here's the back. And I'm gonna tell you, it was really easy to do and it's a great way to quilt your quilts too. Just, you can do a lot of things on your domestic machine and this is one of them. So stay tuned if you'd like to see how I did it. So I'm gonna show you how I go about cross hatching something. I've got two layers of material, here's my back. In between, I have got my Annie Soft and Stable. If you're doing a quilt at this point, this will be your batting. And then my top of my fabric. And for you, if you're doing a quilt, this will be your quilt top. So the first thing that I did was I spray basted it with this, which is called 505 Spray and Fix. Now, it's a temporary fabric adhesive. And if you are asthmatic, I really suggest that you do this outside. Otherwise, I do suggest that you spray it in a well-ventilated spot, okay? And be very careful about overspray because it will stick. So once I did that, I did it on the front and the back. So now my piece is ready to be quilted together. In the event that you don't wanna spray baste it, what you can do is just use um, pins, safety pins, to pin it together. And I would suggest that you probably do it about no more than five inches. And what you're gonna wanna do is start from your center and work out. And at the same time, so you're gonna work out side to side and out top to bottom at the exact same time. So you just keep going around and around till you get all the way out. And that's if you are pin basting it. Now you can also hand baste it. If you hand baste it, I suggest again the same thing, especially on a quilt. So this is just a small piece that I'm doing and what I'm gonna show you how to do is the cross hat. As I said, I elected to spray baste it. So I've spray basted it down and next come my marking tools. This is my um, Frixion pen. That's one marking tool that we've got. This is Bowen's mechanical chalk pencil and it's wax free. I really like these pencils. I use these a lot on the long arm. In fact, here's mine right here. But I need, on this one, I would use this except for I need one of the colors and I've used up all my colors. So. I'm gonna use another method. The other option is Clover's Choco Liner. The problem with this is I have used it, the yellow, and it has not come out of the fabric. In fact, one of the stash and dashes that I made, the first one, the blue one, the line never came totally out. I can still see it there. So I'm extremely cautious whenever I use the Choco Liner. In this instance, the one I'm gonna use is I'm actually gonna use my Frixion pen. Because once I draw my 45 degree line, I'm not gonna to have to draw another line again. I only have to draw it once until I go to do the opposite cross hatch. So here's my pen that I'm gonna use. What I'm gonna do is get a nice big ruler, and I've got my ruler here. And I hope you can see it. You may not be able to, but right here is my 45 degree and right here is my 60 degree. So I want my 45 degree line. And what I want to do is line up that 45 degree line right across my straight of grain. I'm going to take it right up here where my top is and where my straightest point is. And I'm gonna back you up a little bit so you can really see what I'm doing. There, now you've got it just about all in frame. 
So what I'm gonna do is take one of my creative grid rulers and I want one of my longer ones. This one is the 24 and a half by eight and a half inch ruler. And I'm marking my straight of grain up here. This is actually the edge of my batting on the inside and you would line it up on a straight line that you can get on your quilt. And then I'm gonna take my friction Frixion pen and I'm just gonna draw one line all the way across it, okay? Since I've done that, hopefully you can see it. I've got a nice red line here. I'm gonna put my pen away and I'm gonna put my ruler away because I don't need that till I go about doing my second hand. Now this is my walking foot. I'm gonna set my walking foot up so that I can stitch about every I'm going to do every inch and a half, I think. So I've taken out a ruler and I've set this down. The next thing I'm going to do, this is my guide. This will go in the back of my walking foot. Let me open this up. This is what holds it in there. Put this in the back of my walking foot. So I'm going to thread it through. Okay. Then I'm gonna line up the very center notch. I've got a center notch right here. That's where my needle will be going up and down. And I'm gonna put that on the one and a half inch mark. Then I'm gonna take my ruler and my thread guide and I'm gonna bring it in until it touches. Okay, now I touch. Now I'm gonna straight tighten this right down, okay? Very, very tight so that my gauge does not move, all right? And I can do it with my finger. That works just fine. Now I'm gonna take this over to my sewing machine and I'm gonna connect it to my sewing machine. I'm gonna turn the angle of the camera so you can see it. And you can see the mess behind my long or behind my sewing machine. That'll make you know that I'm real here. And I'm going to add my walking foot to my sewing machine. That always takes a minute because walking feet are a little tougher to get on than just a regular foot. I'm too far in. Now I'm gonna clamp down my walking foot. Let's see if I can get it to go down. There we go. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna set up the stitching. And I'm going to increase the length of my stitch to three. Only because it's just quilting. It doesn't have to be really tight. I'm not really holding a whole lot together. I'm just doing my thing. I'm gonna bring my all my threads up because I do want to hold it this time. So there's that. Make sure I got my bobbin in okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first stitch right on that line. Do one stitch down. I'm holding my thread in the beginning. Okay, gonna just stitch a straight line down. Okay, there's one line done. Bring this around. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna use this sewing line as my guide for the rest of my lines. So, I'm gonna bring it back, make sure I've got all my threads around so that I don't get caught, but I'm not gonna bother to cut them now. All right. I've lined it up. I'm gonna put my thread guide right down 
on the priest the other stitched line the first one and then I'm just gonna go and here I go here's my next line okay that one's done so now I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to go back to this line right here. The very first one, because I'm using this as my guide again. I'm going to line it up to about where it starts, drop my presser foot, and stitch again. I'm going to keep doing that until I have covered the entire fabric one time through. And I'll be back when I finish sewing all of my lines across one way. Now I'm going to take a minute to just clean up all my threads. Okay, just take me a second to snip through all of them. Get them all snipped off. I'm going to do this on the front and on the back. Another one here. Flip it over and do the back. And then we are going to make it into a cross hatch and I'll show you in just a second how we're going to do that. Okay. All right, all cleaned up. All right, so I'm going to take this over to the ironing board and I'm going to press out my line right here right now i'm going to mark my second line so i'm going to take this again and remember i've already marked 145 degree so now i need to mark it in the other direction so now i'm going to place this on the end of my project so now i'm down here on the end i'm going to take my pen again and I'm going to draw a line again. And now I'm going to use this red line and I'm going to stitch on the side of it, on each side of the line, just like I did before, spacing all of my stitches about an inch and a half apart. And then when I get all done, I'm going to have a cross hatch. So I'll be back in just a few minutes and show you what it looks like. So it's all done as quickly as that. Here's my right side and you can see all of my little cross hatching. And then here's the reverse side. And these are not pucker puckers. They'll be fine. They're laying out flat. It just, um, I, it's because there's a little bit of glue there still, but it'll be just fine. And I want to show you another piece that I did. So here's my stash and dash. This is the one that I used this marker with to mark the lines. And you can see right here, whoops, sorry. I think you can see right here that the yellow did not come out yet. So um, I'm very careful. I tend to just use this with garments. And on this one that I just did for you now, I used my friction pen, Frixion pen by Pilot, and um, these are actually available on my website if you'd like one, and this is how I did it. Now this took me maybe 20 minutes to do, and it's, I mean, it's not a huge piece. It's, I think, 10 and a half by 18 or 11 by 18. It's for my next project, so there's that. Thank you for sticking around all the way to the end where I show you how I go about cross-hatching. 
This is actually for my next project, which is called Open Wide. It's another pattern by Annie, and I think it's going to be a great little bag, and I'm very anxious to get it going. So that's what I'm going to do with that. So thanks a bunch. Hope you're having a great week, and I'll see you again really soon. Bye.